everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Today I'm doing um, a dialing in uh, a tone for one of my favorite guitar players uh, out there right now. And that is uh, the amazing Ian Thornley from the Canadian group uh, Big Rec. Um, it's funny, I've done a couple cover solos of his, Ghosts and... Uh, a uh, million days, what else? I, I digress, I believe. They're, they're a big band up here in Canada. I, I know they have a following in the U.S., um, but as far as I'm concerned, one of the most amazing bands out there right now. Ian is just this incredible, mind-blowing singer, an incredible songwriter, and an absolutely unbelievable guitar player that just mixes so many cool influences in his playing. And if you don't follow him on social media, go check him out. If you haven't checked out Big Rack, definitely check it out. But I've actually had a bunch of requests over quite some time to do a dialing in uh, video and a preset for... Uh, uh, Ian Thornley-esque or Ian Thornley-ish style tone. Now the problem with that is he's got so many different amazing tones. Uh, he plays his sewer guitars. I believe he plays through sewer amps as well. Um, but he, he, the Big Rec albums have so many different tones on them. Great, wonderful, clean tones. Great sort of mid-gain tones and great, like amazing, super heavy tones. I just decided to do like more of one of his big, fat, big, distorted, thick tones that he's known for on his albums. And they just released a new single uh, last week, I believe Friday it came out. Um, and the funny thing is one of my longtime viewers, uh, a, a gentleman named Alan Forsyth, uh, who's I've talked to a few times over Messenger, he requested that I do uh, an Ian Thornley tone for one of their other new singles off their upcoming album, Locomotive. And it's really funny because he sent me a Facebook message. Um, and as I was sitting down for, for my coffee in the morning on the weekend, I hadn't even listened to the new single by uh, Big Rec. And I, I just queued it up to listen to it as I was having my coffee. And I opened Alan's message. He was asking me, I said, oh, must be a sign that I should do a, uh, <laughs> a uh, Ian Thornley video. So what I did is I modeled it after this new single that they have, which is called Too Far Gone. If you haven't heard it, go listen to it. It's this monstrous uh, guitar tone on it. And it, it kind of is indicative of a lot of guitar tones Ian's had before. Huge bottom end, this really sweet mid, uh, mid range uh, without anything harsh about it, but just cuts through the mix. Really beautiful stuff. Anyways, I'm tuned down a, a half a step for this as Ian is on the song. So what I did, check out the performance video. I did sort of a, uh, the, the middle guitar break and solo, which showcased this tone really nicely. Um, and you'll see how I dialed it in in just a minute here. But check that performance video out. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I used uh, Superior Drummer 3 uh, for the drums, uh, Moto Bass, IK Multimedia Moto Bass for the bass, and then it's all the guitars from this preset untouched in the mix, so you can hear what this sounds like. So let's dive over to HX Edit here and see what I actually did. Now, we obviously don't have a sewer guitar amp model in the Helix. Maybe that'll come at some point. Who knows? Uh, but I've always found, anytime I've covered Ian's stuff in the past, I've always gone with the German Mahadeva, which is a model of the, uh, what is it, Bogner Shiva, I believe, right? And it just seems to work nicely for it. So again, this isn't exactly the tone, but it's in that ballpark. And if you are playing any big rack stuff, this is, should work out quite nicely for you. So as you can see, I have a few things going on here, EQ-wise, uh, kind of a cool little mod uh, block here. But let's start at the end of the chain, as always. I went with the LA Studio Comp, normal settings except for the fact that I pulled the mix back to 50%. This is a really heavy distorted tone, and I didn't want it clamping down too much on it. So I pulled it back to more of that New York style parallel compression. So some of the unaffected signals going through, and then we're getting you know, sort of half and half between the, the glued together signal and that, okay? Um, the EQ, I did some pretty drastic things. We'll come back to that in a minute. The room set and the reverb setting, I just kept it in my normal, simple room setting, uh, room reverb, decay of 3.5, pre-delay of 11 milliseconds, mix of 25%, just to give it more of a sound like it was an amp being recorded inside of a room with a little bit of ambience. The delay I use only on, there's three snapshots here. There's rhythm lead ring mod, as you'll see in a second, and uh, lead delay. So I just turned this on on the lead snapshot just to give it a little bit of delay. Uh, Ian Sound does have that in a lot of his solo stuff. So it's a uh, sync to a quarter note for whatever tempo you want to set it at for your song. Feedback of 18% and mix of 30%. Pretty typical settings for me again. And it's a transistor tape. Split crossover, I set at 650 hertz where I set it quite often. I boosted all the frequencies above that by 8 dB and didn't touch any of the frequencies below that. 
For the cab, I went with the stock cab that comes up by default with the um, German Mahadeva, and it's the 112 lead 80, but I went with the 121 ribbon at one inch back just to really keep that bottom end big because this has a big bottom end, this, uh, this tone, Spinal Tap would be proud. <laughs> um, okay, so what did I do on the amp? Well, I set the drive at 10, the bass at 10, mids at 1.6, treble at 8.1, Presence at 6.4, channel volume at 6, uh, master at 7, and I didn't touch the deeper controls or deeper functions on that, okay? So that uh, gave me sort of what I was looking for amp tone-wise. I also added a kinky boost in front of it just to give it a little more boost and, and cut with the bright switch on a little tiny bit more of a different style gain than I was getting just from the amp distortion, okay? To kick it up a little more because it's a pretty heavy tone, so that worked nicely. Um, so that's the rhythm tone. Now let's take a look at what I did with the EQs because this is where it got a little bit crazy. I use a simple EQ which has a low and high shelf that aren't adjustable. I don't even know what frequency they're at, but I just kind of played around with them to my ears and it got it to work. I cranked the low gain up 12 dB, the high gain up 10.6 dB, and the mid frequency I set at 430 hertz and I, I set that uh, plus 5 dB. So kind of a bit of that kind of smiley face curve depending on, like I said, where those low and high gain uh, frequencies are set. I've never bothered to really look into that. It doesn't really matter. Just use my ears to set that up. And then for the last EQ here, I put low frequency of 60 hertz with a Q of 2.3, boosted that up another 12 dB. Uh, mid frequency of 440 hertz with a, a mid Q of 1.4, boosted that up another 3.4 dB. And then I went up to six kilohertz with a Q of 1.5 boosted that up 5.1 dB. Low cut down to 25 hertz. I might as well have just turned it off probably. It's, I don't know what it's doing, but as I was playing around, I ended up there. And a high cut of 12 kilohertz, okay? So let's do this. Let's turn off our EQs and our split crossover and our kinky boost and just see what the amp sounds like as is without any of that other processing, okay? <laughs> really dark and muddy, not what we want at all. So let's turn that split crossover on. That's why I went with that and boosted all those frequencies above 650 hertz by 8 dB. Let's see what that does for us. Gets it a little bit more cutting and bright, which is nice, but really lacking that bottom end we want out of it. So let's turn these EQs on. Well, let's turn this first EQ, the simple EQ on, okay? Starting to get there. Let's turn our last EQ on. Pretty huge now. Now let's add in our kinky boost and see what we got. So massive tone out of that now. So that's our rhythm snapshot. Now, the interesting part is, okay, actually let's jump to snapshot three because all I did different is I added the delay in with all of that. <laughs>
really nice lead or rhythm. So just that by adding that delay in, it gives it kind of a nice uh, smoothness to the lead, right? So there's a rhythm. Lead. massive tone on that. The other thing I did do actually is I set the noise gate on this. If I turn it off, it is a bit noisy as we can hear there. So I turned that off uh, or turn that on, but just set the threshold kind of low so it doesn't cut any of my notes off. Now the one thing on this song, I thought I would do a second snapshot that used what I heard was kind of a funny effect on the solo for Too Far Gone. You'll hear it in the performance video and you'll hear it on Ian's original version. It sounded to me like he had like some sort of a ring modulator on. Um, and so I put that on. I put our AM ring mod on with these settings, uh, frequency at 2.1 kilohertz, AM on at uh, that AM frequency at 4.2 kilohertz, the LFO uh, turned off and the mix at 50%, but you notice it's snapshot enabled. And what I did is I, I set it to expression pedal two. So the reason for that is, um, let, let, let's listen to, again, here's, here's the tone without the, the ring modulation and then I'll put it on. Here it is on. Now the thing at the end of this solo is Ian hits this really kind of... I have no idea whether I'm playing the solo right either. I literally listened to this song on Sunday morning, I believe it was, transcribed the solo really fast, learned it really fast. He's probably playing it different than this, so don't, don't call me out on that. I just tried to get something that was close. So he does this really sort of ungodly kind of screaming sound. At the end. So what I did is I set my, my, my expression pedal to be able to boost that up the mix from 50% to 80%. So as I'm playing the solo, I can just kind of slam that, that ring modulator up to 80% mix on that last note. And then there's a harmony on it too at the end where he harmonizes the solo from this part with a, with a, with a harmony, I believe it's like a third above it. And then he, he goes, I did it like this. So mixing that and that in gives it that really crazy scream at the end. So all I do is as I'm playing the solo at the end of the solo, if you watch the mix control, I just kind of like, slam it up so that it's it's uh, up to a higher mix on the ring modulator but something like that. It's a close enough facsimile. Like I said, I don't even know if I'm playing that right. It was a very quick transcription and I, I literally played it through like five or six times and then recorded the solo. So go easy on me. Um, so yeah, but what you'll hear in the performance video is the rhythm track uh, doing a double and I just pan it left and right like I oftentimes do in studio and it's this riff here. on the low E. 
That's the tone. So guys, I'm gonna have this up on custom tone by the time this video goes up. I hope you enjoy it. Very different than something I would dial in. Huge bottom end on it, uh, but it's fun to play through, man, oh man. And like I said, it's not exact, but I think I've got somewhere in the ballpark of what Ian's sound is on the new, soul, the new uh, single, Too Far Gone. And I think it'll work well, uh, maybe with you know some slight tweaks for a lot of the other great Big Rec and his other band, Thornley, actually, another amazing band you guys check out if you haven't. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Go grab the preset, check out the performance video, enjoy all of that. And I'll be back soon with some more content. Please like the video, share it if you don't mind. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys spreading the word. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, we got some fun stuff coming up. I'm approaching 10,000 subscribers, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Um, I thank you guys so much for the continued support. And we're gonna be doing something fun when we hit 10K, so. Uh, yeah, anyways, I'll keep an eye on, on things for that. So thank you again for tuning in and I'll be back soon. Ciao for now.